Hey guys, today we're gonna be going over a Nyad match. So honestly, there isn't really too much to say since the last time I made a uh, Nyad guide. I mean, she hasn't really gotten any buffs, nerfs. She's pretty much remained made consistent. I think the thing that is worth mentioning though is that a lot of times a lot of people are confused on how to use her just because I see a lot of people calling her the Thai Queen and while yes she is mostly able to get ties to be able to get ties consistently I feel like is a pretty good thing than rather than having to fight for a tie you know so real quick this build I said this before this is a tournament build and you bring insolence just so you can get your dashes faster as well as just speed up to getting full presence to speed up the time it takes for your water areas to basically build up on survivors now the thing that i've been noticing a lot whenever i review rank matches on stream or just in general is a lot of times a lot of people are using their harpoon when they don't necessarily need to and when you're chasing someone you don't always have to like create a water area if you spend time like trying to make a little water radius every single like second you have while you're chasing someone just to build up water you're not really going to get that far and you're going to end up wasting a lot of time like you need to build water just to cut off certain areas but then after that you can just you know use your harpoon for like a quick dash and then pull it back you don't always have to create like spend time creating a little water area or like a water path just because i feel in my opinion i feel like that's how you waste a lot of time and that's how you basically kill your early game with her now and the match that I'm about to show y'all, again, I'm just running the same build, nothing crazy with her. And just to kind of loop back around her being consistent, like, again, she hasn't received any buffs or nerfs. I think she still pretty much remains weak to, like, the same couple people, just characters that, you know, take a second to knock down because they eat up a lot of hits. So, like, Ada, Seer, Perfumer, just uh, those characters you also kind of want to avoid. Or as well as just characters that are kind of able just to, you know, remain consistent and having distance. So, at that point, you'd be, we'd be talking about, like, Acrobat until patient just some characters that you normally would struggle just chasing after so here we're starting on red church again i feel like it's a pretty fair map for her despite it being small here i get a decent spawn point and so i start rotating towards the professor and or ah, fuck So here, i start rotating towards i believe the professor or the acrobat it's been a minute since i've seen this match but yeah, so before I toss up my harpoon, I kind of just wait so I can get like a decent area over the size of graveyard, or at least like this, not graveyard, sorry, over the side of back gate. And here, Acrobat's kind of just running into me, just trying to avoid the harpoon. So again, I mostly just tossed out the harpoon just because I didn't know where he was going to be rotating. I knew he'd be over here just sometimes depending on how they want to rotate, it's a little different. So here, I'm just following him around the window because I'm going to make a circle right as soon as I cross that water path. And again, I'm just trying to, you know, pressure him inside the water. He ends up running back into me. I think he wanted to bomb over the pallet, but just decided not to and try to just reach her this one. So here, again, he has a little bit more water built up on him. I'm just going to try and pressure him. I want to try and throw it at that window just in case he wants to beat me to it. Here, he ends up just running back into me. And so I'm predicting him to throw on the pallet. Here, I pull back the harpoon. He would have taken a hit either way. And here, I just go ahead and whack him. Now, with this team comp, I'll be dealing with a little bit of extra Cypher Rush from Mind's Eye. There also isn't a Mercenary or anybody with a huge decoding debuff, so they'll be able to get those Cyphers done in a decent amount of time. My only real threat here for this team comp would just be if I'm not able to get a quick kill on the Rescuer. And I'm assuming at this point it's going to be the Professor coming to save, since he's got a bit of a shield. Because, like, Prospector, I don't really see him as a strong Rescuer. He's mostly just, you know, a good, decent harasser. And that Mind's Eye's not going to throw herself at me this early in the match, just because that would be pretty dumb. So... Like I was saying, Professor's going to come right here. I wanted to try and hit him right here. I had a dash lined up, but unfortunately, my dash kind of ran out. So here, I make a circle. And when I saw the shield, I thought he was just going to go for it. So I was like, okay. I want to try and build up a little bit more water on them before I decide to pressure them a bit more. And so here, again, I try to dash. I end up missing both of them. And I'm just like, all right. I don't want to waste too much time. I knew he was going to bomb. I thought he was just going to instant drop the pallet. And then here, I thought about blinking. Decided not to because I didn't want to hit the shield. And then here I start getting some frame rate issues. So I decided not to swing right away just in case. I wanted to build up more water again. But that time I got trapped on by the pallet. So here they're all just going to take a hit. Since, you know, Professor kind of was harassing a little too close. I'm not really harassing. But just kind of just, you know, being where he wasn't really wanted. And as a result he just took damage because of it. And then here I built up a little bit more damage on Acrobat. Now, 
Professor, I don't think is gonna save again at this point in time. I'm just thinking, okay, well, no, he's already injured, and I don't know if they're like how good their cipher progress is. I know they're a little bit ahead, just because of that little slight rebound kite that um, Professor was able to provide. Here I see Prospector, and I'm like, okay, like this gives me enough time. I'm able to build up a lot of water on him because I'm at full presence now, thanks to my insolence. Here I take him off the chair because I get a hit on him, and then I just stuff him, easy peasy. He didn't throw a magnet on me or anything, so that was kind of just the opening point. If he had thrown a magnet, that 100% would have been um, just like a one-hit kind of situation. He would have been able to get the save off, but I guess he thought that he had time because I was still in my harpoon, or I was still like roaming around without it. So here... Now that I have Prospector, I know where Mind's Eye's at because I saw the Cypher moving. Or, excuse me, I know where Prospector... Or, excuse me, God damn it. I know where Professor's at because I saw the Cypher moving inside Church. What I was not expecting is after I make this little radius inside Church to cover the Cypher, I wasn't expecting the Mind's Eye to also be here. So, here, Professor goes ahead and takes a hit, and Mind's Eye takes a hit from the water as well. So, I just double hit her. I kind of just slug her because I'm like, okay, I don't really need to focus on sharing her. I can just worry about, you know, double hitting the Prospector again or just stuffing... I could just stuff the um, professor here. He uses Flower Con early, and then again, Prospector went or Professor went back into Red Church when I pulled back my harpoon. So, in case for those of y'all that missed it, here. Keep in mind, when I'm using my harpoon, I'm keeping track of the water area that I'm making, as well as the distance. And he's already running back inside Red Church to heal the Mind's Eye, so he was already building up a little bit of water there. But when I pulled back my harpoon, he was at 49%, and at full presence, when you pull up back the harpoon, you get 50 water. So, that pretty much just lined, him up, lined up perfectly for me to just get a water hit on him. So, that's just how that happened. But yeah, anyway, a chair prospector, and I'm like, okay, all I really gotta worry about is chairing Mind's Eye and Professor. Um, I know that they're just going to use their self heals, so at this point, it's literally just a back and forth game of just playing tag with them and just trying to get them. Here, I'm not really worried about chasing Mind's Eye. I don't think she had broken windows. I think she might have had Tide or something, because here, I know she didn't get a speed boost, so I just got a whacker. I was waiting because she had Flywheel, but she didn't use it, so I was like, okay, I mean, she probably just had Tide. Um, Tide's Eye, as a lot of people call her, whenever they don't bring any, like, cutting abilities or cutting perks. Um, so again, here, Professor comes back. I throw my harpoon again just to kind of get him away from Red Church so he's forced to just run out of the open. Here I know he has a shield so I'm just going to try and build water on him. I'm trying to walk in front of him or just walk around him. And here I'm waiting for him to use it again so that I can just blink through the pallet and easy 4k. GG's. Like I was saying, um, I feel like it's a pretty fair hunter. You know, she's pretty consistent when it comes to just using her abilities. She's not really... You're not really able to shake up her playstyle a whole lot in my opinion. But I mean, you're still able to kind of do cool crazy stuff with her. Now... The only thing about her that I don't really like is that sometimes I feel like, depending on the team comp, it's a little hard to get the um, to get like a decent early down. Even with insolence and the dash helps, it's just sometimes with the certain with certain team comps and certain characters, you might just be dealing with a, a team comp that's just real fast paced, and it's just able to have a lot of distance from the get go of the match. So it just is a little bit difficult to kind of just be consistent in terms of just getting that kill or getting that down. But yeah, that's it for this little Naya video. Like I said, you know, pretty fair, pretty consistent, using the same tournament build. They haven't really updated her or changed her. If there's anything that I would like to see of her in the future, maybe being able to vault windows while she's roaming around, I feel like that would help her out a lot. Because a lot of times it's a pain when I have to just, like, take out, or, like, toss my harpoon, make a little bit of water, pull it back so I can vault the window, since you can't do it when you're roaming. I mean, like, I know that's fair, it's just... Oh uh, no, a part of me which is like, oh okay, maybe you know she could get a little bit more of a speed boost. But yeah, anyway, hope this video helps. Good luck on your rank matches and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.